If you are looking for a heist type game where you are performing subtle actions in order to sneak your way around a corporation and pretty much destabilize these futuristic companies, corporations from the inside out, you're gonna get exactly that in Burn Cycle. But the biggest question that I wanna to answer today is, will it appeal to gamers that are interested in topics outside of that. If gamers aren't really necessarily looking for that particular theme, for those particular mechanics that play around that futuristic theme, is it going to appeal to them? Well... Hello everyone and welcome back to the Wolfpack. Now as of the time of this recording, we are so close, this close. We are 1,000 away from 15K. So if you like what we do here on this channel, then please consider subscribing and help me get to 15K. Now with that said, I'm gonna give you a brief rundown of how Burn Cycle works and then we'll get straight into the review. So here is the setting for Burn Cycle. Fast forward a thousand years, we are now in the year 3000 and our mission is to infiltrate three massive corporations. Why? Because they have stolen some secret codes from us and it is up to us to utilize this burn cycle, which is a whole series of actions that is able to decode all of these secret coding sequences. Now you start off this game with a mission card, depending on the corporation that you plan to play against. Now each mission is gonna start off, of course, with the premise, and then on the back side, it's gonna tell you the setup for each floor. They all have different kind of setups and a mission that you need to accomplish for each floor. With that, you're going to start off with this base neoprene mat, and then from this giant map, you'll be placing different individual neoprene mats that have different rooms and all these layouts. And you construct these rooms according to the floor plan book, which is gonna give you a ton of unique layouts depending on which floor that you're playing on. From there, you'll place different terminal chips, different cache chips like this orange one here. This is pretty much like equipment that you can gather. And then you also place surveillance speeds, you start off along the edge of the board and set up your own player module and a command module. And the last thing you set up too is also this network and a threat level. Every character isn't only asymmetric as you slot them into your own player board, but they have their own unique distinguishing characteristics when you put them into the command module as well. So there's a lot of this crosstalk between the command module, your player board, the map, and of course the network, which is pretty much how you're going to be fighting against the digital world of these corporations. It's how you are fighting against these pings and just imagine like this crazy computer coding sequence and you are digitally fighting against this boss captain. And then you perform your actions depending on what you have in your burn cycle. So again, if I have my physical purple chip, then I can use that to move. And then this will keep moving to the right as I perform each action. From there, the burn cycle will reset and then you perform your network action. So again, it starts off with at one at the burn cycle, and then you have your marker where your die is, and this will be moving along this circular track, ultimately trying to knock off the pin from the captain in order to bring this back over here in the top slot, and this will net you different rewards depending on which ring that you're in. And then from there, it's the corporation's turn. They're going to be activating the security guards and roaming the floor, they're attacking you if you're within distance, and then they're also going to be attacking you from the inside out of the network as well. Okay, with that said, Let's get into the review. First off, we need to take a moment to appreciate the production value that has been put on by Chip Theory Games to make this massive, extremely organized and beautiful work of art that Burn Cycle is. Aside from the artwork being amazing, the way they organized everything for you from like the beginning of the tutorial all the way throughout learning the entire process of the game is amazing. I cannot stress enough how many board games just like throw everything in a box and expect you to organize it as you go. Their chips are my favorite components of the game. Of course, it being chip theory games, they're just, the quality of these chips are like insane. They're thick, they're freaking amazing to play with. And I even saw miniatures that you can put on these chips as well, which is absolutely stunning. I don't have the minis with me, but like, come on, magnetic minis that attach onto chips. I, where have you seen that before? I haven't seen that anywhere else except here. All of these neoprene mats are custom cut. The die fits in perfectly into these square slots. And even like your player board, you can slot them into a neoprene mat. I just love the production value of their games. This is my first one out of the Chip Theory Games line. So comment down below which one is your favorite game because I would have to say after seeing the production value of Burn Cycle, I am a thousand percent excited for Too Many Bones, which is sitting right there on my shelf, shrink wrapped 
and ready to be played too. Look, bottom line, is this game overproduced? Yes, but I'm here for it. And you know what? So are my videos too as well. So I can obviously appreciate the overproduction value of this board game. Okay, so that is definitely a highlight for me. The production value really makes this game. I think if it wasn't produced like this, it would really detract away from how fun it could be. Now with that said, the second highlight that I wanna point out is the amount, the variety of actions that you can take. Being able to manage your own board, optimizing your dice pool with the amount of power that you are routing with every turn. You can install modules, you're fighting in the network. There are just a ton of really cool things happening and a lot of mechanics for you to manage all at once. The complexity of coordinating all these actions at once and giving the player a ton of freedom and having access to a ton of different actions, I think is one major highlight of the game. But that leads me to point number three, which is actually the same, it's a double-edged sword because yes, you have access to a ton of actions, but um, point number three, unfortunately, is that it routes you, pun intended, towards one major action. And I think that's where the game falls flat for me. It's actually, from my play, so I played this game three times, solo only. These three missions are the ones that I played through. Knee Chain, Ocularity, and Slita are the three different corporations. Uh, they are different levels of complexity, so we have one, two, and three being the max. Just wanted to give a variety to see um, how really how the game plays. I wanted to kind of reconfirm my point. Okay, look, if you pass the honeymoon phase of this game, if you look past the production value and past the variety of actions that you do have access to, in reality, on your turn, you're only performing, for the most part, two major things. You're moving and you're unlocking doors. That is what I pretty much did throughout all the missions across all the floors. Unfortunately, if you just take a step back and you look at the missions, and after like going through you know, 40 pages of this rule book, you spend hours going through floor one and floor two, you get to the final floor, and ultimately, all you need to do is go from here to there, and then while your chip is waiting there, you're playing this side game of moving pins around this network board. So you can see how it feels very anticlimactic, and it feels empty, you know? And I really prefer like big endings, especially after all that buildup. You spend all this time learning the game, you go through all these floors, and then you get to the end, and it's like, that's it. So I was definitely craving a lot more of a punchier ending. And even if the ending wasn't like uh, interesting enough, I just wish that the missions were more, there was more substance to the missions versus go here and go to this spot. Again, looking through these mission cards, they all essentially are the same thing. So like here, having all bots in a different room for the operation dial up. Again, your mission is to move to a spot. Operation power play, floor two, lock down the main furnace. To do so, take a general action with four action point checks while on this space. Again, mission, move to a spot. Operation Pillar of Panic, floor one, collect the cash. Floor two, discard two equipment pieces while in the restroom. And then floor three, place the bomb in this elevator space and the distraction action to destroy a wall in the ex executive office. Again, break down all three. How do you perform all these? Move to a specific location. Like I love being able to get network cars and grab their equipment and do all these things to kind of level up your character and power them up. But ultimately, if your mission is to move there, it doesn't give you as much incentive to go through all of those different actions in order to get to your final end game point. Now ending on a high note, what I did enjoy the most as a solo gamer actually is the burn cycle itself. I found it really interesting to split your actions, to divvy up your power between characters and taking these free actions in order to change the type of slots that you have. You can even increase the amount of actions that you can take in your burn cycle by putting in more chips. Figuring out when and what to slot in at the right moments of the burn cycle slot, I have found to be the most interesting part of burn cycle overall. That was definitely the highlight of my gameplays. I think if you like heist type games with incremental actions, then you're gonna get exactly what you're looking for in burn cycle. But for me, I am giving this game a three to five. Despite its pitfalls, I think burn cycle does exactly what it's designed to do. What holds it back is how repetitive those actions feel since you're going to be rolling dice and moving a majority of the time and ultimately trying to reach a destination without getting caught. That is the bulk of what you'll be doing. If you take a step back and look at your missions, they can all be traced to two general ideas, which is pretty much moving and opening doors. Now circling back to the biggest question of the day, will this game appeal to gamers who aren't in the market for a stealthy game like this? Because this is ultimately a very, very specific niche being board games within a niche being a solo 
pretty much solo oriented game uh, within another niche being stealthy games. So if you narrow it down all the way like that, will it appeal to gamers outside of that? I don't think so. I can't speak of the cooperative experience of this game because I only played this uh, solo, but I feel like it would only amplify the experience that you're already getting as a solo player. It's great at what it does, but I don't think it's going to appeal to others outside of that. So those are my thoughts on Burn Cycle. If you have played Burn Cycle or you're interested in Burn Cycle, let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments below. With that, thank you so much for watching today's review and I'll see you all in the next video.